let the peace, love, and blessing of Jehovah God and His Christ be upon the entire world. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The law of the new age. Everlasting gospel delivered to the entire world by the Holy Spirit of Truth. Leader Olumba Olumba Obu, the supernatural teacher. First lesson, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 16 to 17. To the one, we are the saver of death unto death, and to the other, the saver of life unto life. And who is sufficient for these things? For we are not as many which corrupt the word of God, but as of sincerity, but as of God, in the sight of God speak we in Christ. Second lesson, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 12 to 13. For now we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face, now I know in part, but then shall I know, even as also I am known. And now abideth faith, hope, charity, these three, but the greatest of these is charity. Golden text, Matthew chapter 5, verses 44 to 45. But I say unto you, love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, and pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you, that ye may be the children of your Father which is in heaven, for he maketh his Son to rise on the evil and on the good, and sendeth rain on the just and on the unjust. The Concept of Love Quote, Brethren, our Lord Jesus Christ only testified about the concept of love. The said concept was practically found in him. The said concept was not practically found in him because he never had much time to demonstrate it to the fullest. The manifestation of the concept of love was designed for this era and that is why love has become the most paramount phenomenon here in the kingdom. Our Lord Jesus Christ could not demonstrate this concept of love in a fuller perspective because he had limited time at his disposal. In fact, nobody knew anything about love during his advent. Christ, per se, did not practice this concept. Hence, many accusations were leveled against him, such as being, such as beating people in the temple, ejecting them and causing division among the Jews and the Gentiles. Beloved, the above text centers on love, the law of the new age. That is to say, in the new age, all have resurrected with Christ and all the former things like hatred, hunger, war, and grudges have passed away, thus paving the way for love to manifest in its true perspective. So we are now bound by love. Our Lord Jesus Christ testified about this truth and above all, he gave his life as a ransom for many, as a means of demonstrating the essence of love. The new age which Christ paved the way for has no room for anything incompatible with love. My primary assignment is to inform you that God is love and that it is a must that you practice this love. Beloved, our Lord Jesus Christ brought forth love into the world 
So whoever lacks love should blame his nature for having created him so. It was not possible for the concept of love to manifest because before now the Hebrews, the Gentiles and Jews were very incompatible and never accepted to associate or be, a, or be identified with one another. But when Christ came, he started at that time to show people the need to unite. A maxim has it that a one-eyed man is the king in the city of the blinds. This maxim manifested in our Lord Jesus Christ as far as that was concerned. Be on the watch and be prepared to because by the year 2001 AD love which is brotherhood shall fully manifest in its true perspective. Presently this concept of love cannot be found in you because your behavior has revealed that the ties of love and brotherhood do not bind you. Brotherhood of the cross and stars shall be revealed to people gradually. Therefore, attempt not to reveal it hastily. However, this would be accomplished within a short space of time. For instance, there are lots of critics of brotherhood today and it would appear a bit difficult to convince such people is hastily. To accomplish this task, you must always reiterate on the facts about brotherhood to the entire world and by so doing people shall gradually be shaped and their understanding about the kingdom made positive. Wherever, whenever you wish to take this news to them, you must endeavor to apply such elements of patience, endurance, love, mercy, goodness and humility. Ensure that you do not curse anybody who reviles you in the course of your operation. Christ came and died so as to unite the entire world and also introduced the concept of love for the purpose of revealing God. Therefore, the most important thing in life is to express, to possess, and to demonstrate the true love to all and sundry, to see and to be convinced that God has actually come. If somebody comes in here, for the first time. He would not find love in any of you except in the Father. For example, if he drops his shoes outside before he would finish receiving the Father's Gospel, his shoes would have been stolen by you. Does such behavior portray that you have love? In another instance, most members are fond of discriminating against those they claim to be new members. But does this attitude prove that you have love at all? Apart from the Father, no other person here in the kingdom has exhibited love to its fullest. The darkness, hatred and division in you have always remained the constant, has always remained the constraint in the wheel of your progress. For one to cause a dead man to resurrect or perform other miracles does not constitute love. Similarly, the gestures you express to people do not connote love. The real love which symbolizes God 
will soon be explained to you. An ethic adage has it that if it were not difficult to urinate, the birds would have done so. In the same vein, love is not an easy concept to be learned or practiced. Hence, none of you, irrespective of the number of years you have put up here in this kingdom, possesses love, let alone to practice it. It is said in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 3, that, quote, And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I gave my body to be burnt and have not charity, it profit, it, it profit me nothing. End of quote. What is love? Beloved, the above text should then reveal to you what love is all about. Therefore, irrespective of your ability and knowledge acquired, if you do not have love, then your potentiality is meaningless, null, and void. Beloved, if you have the ability to foresee the future and in in retrospect to the events of many decades ago but are devoid of love such is unprofitable now what comes what connotes love many people do regard their ability to forgive one's trespasses to mean love but the question is, if such connotes love, then what would be your contribution in terms of love to those that do not trespass against you? Or does it mean that a righteous man needs not to be loved? Similarly, if you regard the money you give to a poor man to mean or connote love, what would be your contribution to a rich and wealthy man in fulfillment of the instruction that you must love one another? Or does it mean that love is limited to the poor alone? You may claim that your ability to bail a person from jail connotes love. But how would you express such love to a freed man? Does it mean that love must be limited to the prisoners alone? Love cannot be seen, it cannot be felt, perceived, and or heard about in the flesh. It is a spiritual concept which would only be known in the spirit. This explains why when Peter disclosed to Christ that he is the son of the living God, Christ told him to conceal the fact till the fullness of time for its manifestation. That was in Luke, in Luke chapter 9. Verses 18 to 21, it says, And it came to pass, as he was alone praying, his disciples were with him, and he asked them, saying, Whom say the people that I am? They answering said, John the Baptist, but some say Elias, and others say one of the old prophets is risen again. He said unto them, But whom say ye that I am? Peter answering said, The Christ of God. And he straightly charged them and commanded them to tell no man about that thing. That was in Luke chapter 9 verses 18 to 21. 
Love is a spiritual concept. Brethren, love does not make mistakes nor talk at random. And he is ever perfect. Christ's aim was to maintain perfection. Hence, he decided not to go further into the areas that were outside his bounds. As referenced in John chapter 16 verses 12 to 13, it says, I have yet many things to say unto you, but he cannot bear them now. Albeit, when he, the Spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. So, brethren, beware of random talks. Do not venture into what you do not know to avoid mistakes. Just like Christ did, it is said, He that speaketh of himself seeketh his own glory, but he that seeketh his glory that sent him, the same is true, and no unrighteousness is in him. That was in John chapter 7 verse 18. Brethren, judging from the text before, suffice it to say, that Christ is the truth by keeping strictly to the limits within which the Father commissioned him. He is all perfect. In the same vein, whoever loves to disappoint another person is devoid of love because love is perfect and is good. Re-examine the first lesson. First lesson. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verses 16 to 17 To the one we are the silver of death unto death and to the other the savour of life unto life and who is sufficient for these things for we are not as many which corrupt the word of God but as of sincerity, but as of God, in the sight of God, speak we in Christ. God is perfection. Beloved, when people affirm strongly that Jesus Christ is all good and perfect, how are they sure? Many people too claim that Christ is devoid of sins. All these are true of him because he never claimed to be good or perfect nor attribute any glory to himself but no man on earth can be like him because we are like the sea full of debris or dirt however take note of the scriptural assertion that blessed are those that god exposes not or impute sins on them. Christ was known in the flesh because at different occasions he indulged himself in carnal practices such as causing division among the Jews and Gentiles, beating and ejecting people from the temple, and cursing the people of Bethsaida for being adamant to the scriptures. Upon all these, Christ did not err, for he come as the Son of God to eradicate the works of darkness. When John the Baptist, the forerunner of Christ, came, he told the people about the exalted position of Christ, who was to come after him. He further told them that he is not worthy to loosen the laces of his shoes. But when Christ finally came into the world, he did not treat John with contempt, neither did he claim superiority over him, but he rather saw himself as being equal to John. Furthermore, over the conversation that arose between them, 
in the river Jordan during the baptism of Christ as contained in Matthew chapter 3 verses 13 to 15 which says then cometh Jesus from Galilee to Jordan unto John to be baptized of him but John forbade him saying I have need to be baptized of thee and comest thou to me and Jesus answering said unto him suffer it to be so now for thus it becometh us to fulfill all righteousness then he suffered him. Our Lord Jesus Christ is the truth. He is also perfect and was and that was why he did not arrogate the glory of accomplishing any task unto himself, but he rather gave every glory to the Father. Ponder over this statement made by our Lord Jesus Christ. It says I can of mine own self do nothing. As I hear, I judge, and my judgment is just, because I seek not mine own will, but the will of the Father which hath sent me. That was in John chapter 5 verse 30. But none of you here would openly declare to the Father the glory of accomplishing any assignment to you. This is because you are seeking for vain glory, but Christ never sought glory to, unto himself, but that of the Father. This explains why he was claimed to be blameless, spotless, and perfect. In everything he did, he called on the Father, and never claimed to be the sole doer of anything. Neither did he hate nor destroy his fellow man's property. He bore eloquent testimony about the Father. Nobody ever knew the Father, so he attributed everything unto him so that God would be exalted, would be revealed. Whosoever is in spirit would know that Christ is the Holy Spirit, love and power, Consequently, whosoever is in Christ is a new creature for the former things have passed away. Anyone who is no more in the flesh will not behave like the carnal people do. As long as we are in Christ, we have all been made one and whatever we do, would be seasoned with perfection because there is no more sin in us. It is only the spirit devoid of all sins that is perfect. But we, being human, normally err. However, God never imputes sins on us. Now, who is the father or mother of all spirit? To which geographical creation can you trace the original spirit? Does the spirit steal? Does the spirit tell lies or be a grudge against any man? No, the spirit does what is good for he is perfect. The spirit is impartial and does his things with equality. Hence, Anything done by the Spirit to the people here in Calabar, the same would be extended to the inhabitants of other towns and the cities all over the world. Anybody who is spiritually minded, therefore, does not cheat. Neither is he crafty at any time. He takes everybody as one and treats them with equality. Whosoever is in spirit has mortified the flesh for the spirit to triumph, and in the same vein his life would be devoid of partiality, segregation, craftiness, and cheat. On the contrary, he that is in the flesh is always carnally minded and very partial in his life. Recall the conversation between our Lord Jesus Christ and a certain Samaritan woman 
as contained in John chapter 4, verses 19 25. It says, The woman said unto him, Sir, I perceive that thou art a prophet. Our fathers worshipped in this mountain, and ye say that in Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. Jesus said unto her, Woman, believe me, the hour cometh when ye shall neither in this mountain nor at Jerusalem worship the Father. Ye worship, ye know not what. We know what we worship, for salvation is of the Jews. But the hour cometh, and now is, when the true worshippers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. The woman said unto him, I know that, that Messiah cometh, which is called Christ. When he is come, he will tell us all things. Love is seasoned with the spirit of equality. Brethren, sequel to the reply which Christ gave to the Samaritan woman that the hour was coming when neither on the mountain nor in Jerusalem shall people worship the Father and that they worship what they know not. The Jews started to hate him. This was because they wanted their exclusive pattern of worship to be protected and legalized by Christ. Have you now realized that love is ever impartial and seasoned with the spirit of equality? Love is not make, love does not make claim of anything. Your boastful claim that you initiated a particular project and as such you should be accorded recognition connotes love connotes lack of love what whosoever has love has oneness has equality and impartiality as is what words this is why no one can be likened unto our Lord Jesus Christ. God is perfect and he bears eloquent testimony to that fact. Our Lord Jesus Christ is the greatest and the number one. Christ never did anything out of his own volition. Rather, he attributed everything to the Father. And if we were to have this love, we would not have claimed to be the doer of anything because this claim makes us liars. Christ remains the only victor now and until eternity. Let the second lesson be re-examined.